Hello everybody, my name is David LeBlanc and today I'll be talking about pretty much every Normandy Plateau clarinet that's ever been made. We've got a variety of different models ranging from 5, 10, 14, 140, and also the Vito at the end. So let's start with the lowest in number, and necessarily the lowest in quality. The model numbers don't tend to scale up proportionally, I guess you would say. Um, you know, some, some things do, like Yamaha, the YCL20 is a lower class than the YCL34, but then again, the Yamaha the YCL200 you know, AD is less than 34. Anyways, the numbers don't really give a distinguishment on the quality and the level that each clarinet was at. So let's just go through the differences in all these different models that we have, starting with the lowest number, which is the 5P. First, we have the Normandy 5P, which is right here. Um, Normandy 5P was distinguished from other Normandy models, among other things, by the fact that it has what we call buffet-style trill keys that are mounted on three sets of posts. And we can compare that to what they call the inline keys, as you can see here, where they're rather kind of flat, and they have four sets of posts versus this one, which is the buffet style with these kind of bumps there and only three posts. That's one of the ways you can distinguish a 5P from the rest. Uh, additionally, the 5P, when it was produced around 1960, had a list price of $159.50. That sounds kind of cheap for brand new clarinet, but put that in an inflation calculator, we're talking something around $1,400, $1,400 for the Normandy 5P. Now that is quite expensive, for sure. Um, I mean, that today, that would put it uh, close to the range of probably brand new E11, which I guess is fair. You know, we're talking about an inter, so-called intermediate level instrument. Now, the 5P, um, or all the plateaus, would have been slightly more expensive to be anyways because of the plateau keys, which I'll be showing you now. So plateau keys are keys where there are no open holes anywhere on the instrument, not at all. Even the, uh, the thumb, former thumb ring is now a thumb uh, plateau. And some people call this a saxophone system. I don't really agree with that because there's no relation to this in a saxophone, but the um, keys are plateaued uh, somewhat like a flute or, you know, like a saxophone. And an interesting part with the bottom joint is that um, usually we have what we call the three ring key, where there's actually three rings here that you can put your fingers on that all depressing one would depress the others. But in this instance, we have to kind of split them apart and have an interesting mechanism on the side here, which allows these keys to move rather independently of each other. Now the 5P has a, a wooden body and barrel. Of course, uh, we can look a little bit closer at each of those parts and we can see the wood grain if you look closely enough. Wooden body and barrel, but it had what we call a resin or resonate, or some people call plastic composite, whatever you want to call it, a non-wooden bell. And you can tell by the sound it makes when you tap it, as well as the texture and feel and look of it. Now, the 5P also had an upgraded version where you could have paid another $50 or so, bringing the price up to 200 bucks for a uh, 5P with a bell with a bell in wood and that was a thing that they started doing in 1962. Now $200 inflates about 1800 so you're paying 400 extra bucks just for a wooden bell and um, although there's a lot of people who think that bells make a difference I'm sure they do but not for $400 it sure doesn't. So that's the Normandy 5P and by 1964 it was discontinued and replaced by the Normandy 10P. Starting in 1964, the 10P was on sale for $250, which at this point inflates around 2,000 bucks. So now we're talking, uh, you know, buffet R13 levels of quality, not necessarily quality rather, but price. Now is this, would this have uh, measured up with a 2,000 or, you know, rather $250 buffet clarinet at the time? Probably not. However, this was marketed as a rather Interesting enough, the marketing wasn't for a super high-end clarinet. Honestly, the marketing uh, materials that we see from this uh, era 
point towards this as being more of a beginner's clarinet, easier for people with uh, small hands to hold. A lot of kids have trouble uh, covering all the open holes with their small fingers. So a lot of market materials were actually geared towards that, which is strange considering the very high price. And, you know, Normandy is known as well for being a good brand, a rather, you know, decent intermediate brand of quality. So the marketing is rather strange, but regardless of that, let's talk about the 10P. By 1964, we have the 10P, and of course this has those inline trill keys with the four sets of posts. And the way you can determine the 10P is that you look at the body, barrel, and bell, and you're gonna find that they are all wood. Every bit of it is wood. Even that bell that you're paying 400 extra for back in 1962 or so, um, now it came included, and you didn't have a choice not to get a wooden bell. Um, now the 10P is kind of similar to the other ones. You know, they're all rather similar in, in build quality and structure. Um, they just happen to have different compositions and different quirks to each of them. Uh, in terms of overall sound, tone quality, I guess you would go with the 10P due to it being all wood, but that's, uh, you know, that's a thing that some people are rather controversial about if wood actually sounds better or if it doesn't. So that is the story of the 10P, which was later discontinued, and we have the 14P right here. Now, it's important to realize that the discontinuation of certain models did not necessarily mean that they were introducing another one. Um, in fact, a lot of these were actually produced concurrently with each other. A good example is the Normandy 5P, which we looked at earlier, was on sale at the exact same time as the Normandy 14P, which is right here. And um, they're very similar overall. The 5P and the 14P are essentially the same thing. Except, of course, that the 5P is wooden and the 14P is not. Um, 5P here, we can see the body is made out of wood. Let's get closer. The 5P on the bottom of the body made out of wood. 14P up here with the body that is made of a resonite composite material. Now the key work is exactly the same. They both have those buffet style three post trill keys. So they're essentially the same thing just with different materials for production. Now, of course, the 5P had the composite bell, whereas the rest of the instrument was wood. 14P was the entirely composite. Curiously, however, while the 14P was made in France, just like the 5P, they have interestingly different bells. They have interestingly different bells here. So on the right hand side right here is a 5P bell, which has a French style logo. On the left is a 14P bell, which has American style logo. American Normandies would tend to have this more script type of writing, whereas the French ones would have that old fashioned type of font. So despite the fact that they are very similar, made in the same factory with the same keywork even, the bells were rather different. Either the 14P bells were made in France and stamped the American logo, or there were simply American bells that were surplus or whatever and weren't made in France at all. That is unclear. Pricing difference between these two? These were around the same time. 1960, we, we had both of these options. Essentially, the 14P was a downgrade because it wasn't wood, whereas the 5P was the upgrade version. 5P was $159.50, which is like $1,400. 14P was $149.50, $10 less, you subtract the wood. In inflationary terms, we're talking about a hundred dollar difference between these two models. So basically paying a hundred bucks to get wood. At that point, I would think it's rather worthwhile to do the upgrade. A hundred dollars is not very much in the scheme of an instrument to get an all wooden construction. So that's kind of the differences between the five and the 14, which were around the same time, but were just different kind of uh, upgrade and downgrade versions of each one. Now, just for fun, we actually have another 14P right here, which is virtually identical to the other 14P, but there's a slight difference that I'll show you. So let's go back to the 14P that I showed you earlier and the other 14P. So we'll bring them close and we'll take a look. 
We have two that are virtually identical, same exact keywork, same exact body composition of that composite resonite material. The only difference is that the other 14P that I just showed you has France underneath the logo, and the other one does not have France. Um, they're both made in France, as far as I can tell, except one just happens to say one doesn't. So that's the interesting quirk about the second 14P. Um, almost as a universal rule, Normandies that were made in France said that they were made in France. So it's possible that this was made in America, but uh, unlikely because these were just tended to be made in France. So almost like I said, as a universal rule, except for certain American models, which plateaus tended not to be to begin with. You know, regular 14 would have been made uh, in the U.S., but not the plateau. So don't know why it doesn't say France, but that's just how it is. Now, the last Normandy I have here that we'll show is the Normandy 140P. Now, the difference between the Normandy 140P and the 14P is the trill keys now. Trill keys, once again, we have the inline style keys, the four posts that you often see on Beto models. Um, that's the only difference for the most part. The other difference is that the bell actually has a French style Normandy logo, whereas the 14P has an American style logo. So was this bell made in France? Probably. Was the other bell made in France? Potentially, who knows? Doesn't really matter. They're basically the same instrument, except this one just has different trill keys. Which one is better of the trill keys? That's uh, impossible to answer. I mean, as these keys, they both open up holes to the same amount, so it doesn't really matter which trill key system you have. I guess uh, the three post one is a bit more likely to get out of adjustment if you drop it uh, because of the fact that two of the keys have to socket into each other, but it doesn't matter. So 140P was just a different version of the 14P for the most part. Not much to say about this one at all. The last clarinet we'll be talking about today is a Vito model. So LeBlanc Corporation has three different levels of quality, I guess, three different product lines in their company. On the low end for the student models, it's going to be Vito. Intermediate will be the Normandies, and the high end will be the LeBlanc. In this case, um, as far as I'm aware, LeBlanc, the real LeBlanc, never made any plateau clarinets, but Normandy and Vito did, and they were rather, rather common amongst those two companies. This Vito Resitone is very similar to the Normandy. Um, the main difference being it's made out of plastic instead of a composite material. Now, what do I mean by that? You can actually take a look. So on my left hand is a Normandy. And see, you can kind of see that the texture of the material has that sort of stippled appearance. Whereas my right hand has a Vito, which is plastic. And you can see it's much more glossy and smooth. And you can also, if you're holding it in your hand, you definitely have a weight difference. The Normandy is significantly heavier, maybe by about five to 10% than the Vito. So the composite is a sort of something resin sort of material. I don't actually know exactly what the material is for these composite clarinets, but it's very clear that the Vito Resotone is not actually resin, it's, it's a plastic. It's simply a plastic type of material on the Vito. But these two do have the exact same key work as well. You can see that the, uh, they both have those inline keys with the four posts, and I would be certain that these keys are actually interchangeable amongst these two product lines. So the Vito is the low end of the plateau kind of family here, but that's not to say it's a bad clarinet. In fact, Vitos along with the Bundys are considered some of the best student instruments that money can buy um, for a performance cost to performance ratio. These so-called cheap clarinets are, are rather, rather nice for what they are. Um, and the story of plateau clarinets is interesting because Although they originally seemed to be marketed more towards children with smaller hands who had difficulty holding and covering holes, 
In fact, they're actually rather more useful, in my opinion, for older individuals with mobility issues. Um, examples would be folks who may have suffered some type of stroke or something else that rendered one or both their hands with less mobility than before. Um, individuals with Parkinson's who cannot cover holes properly. These allow anybody with in mobility issues in the hands to pick up clarinets again and enjoy music like they used to. I mean, many people who undergo certain injuries are no longer able to play their instruments, which is a very sad situation, but um, these plateaus really are able to give these individuals kind of their old uh, hobbies back. So definitely plateaus are a valuable and interesting part of clarinet history. They are not uncommon, they're not super common, but you can find these pretty readily on eBay and other sites. They're rather expensive these days because of their rather uncommon, unusual nature. These tend to run in the multi-hundreds of dollars up to 600 for something rather nice, like the um, like that all wooden 10P. Yeah, that'll definitely run you multiple hundreds of dollars, but they're very nice instruments. They definitely do the trick. And like I said, in anybody with mobility issues in the hands will certainly appreciate having one of these instruments in their hands. So that's pretty much all I've got for the history of Plateau, or not rather history, but the Normandy Plateau clarinet line. Plateau clarinets have been around for almost 200 years at this point, but the most common and readily available will certainly be the Normandies and the Vitos. Thank you again for watching this quick little thing about the uh, plateau clarinets. Stay tuned for more videos. Hopefully I'll be doing some uh, more soon and you'll see my lovely face uh, more often than before. Thank you.